The mysterious and immortal alchemist Rashan has told us that there is a dweller of torment hiding here in Torment Peak, and that, my friends, is exactly what we came to stop today in Sea of Stars right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on another episode. We need to, uh, well, one, I think we need to wake up this, this guardian of the island here, this, whatever this giant statue person is, which apparently the Fleshmancer might be responsible for, and we're gonna head into Torment Peak. But oh no, you might be asking, it's broken. However, are we going, oh, we now have the power to control the time of day, no matter what. Which is, uh, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to do. I am so excited to see where the hecka this story is going because it just feels so... I, I thought it was going to be like a, a little bit more simplistic of a story. Like, you know, we go, we defeat the dwellers, we save the day. But no, friends, no, there's more to it than that. There's like maybe time travel stuff being introduced, maybe multiple realities. I don't know. No turning back now. Right behind you. Yeah. And we're as equipped as we can be for now. We have the Dakari armor on our boy Zale, the Coral Sword, the Coral Staff, the Coral Daggers, the Phosphorite Lid. We were able to do the entire tower in the last episode. And this time, we're going to do Torment Peak. And the only reason we are able to do this is because we have a potion that was given to us by Rashan which is going to prevent us from losing our minds. Looks like there's also a save point right away. It's also very dark and hard to see anything. So I wonder if there's like uh, crystals or anything we can use to brighten our way here. Well, this looks... Eh, this looks probably not great. The Dweller of Torment, friends. A mysterious dweller, an unknown dweller, a dwe What the hecka? Oh, no, no. That is terrifying. A sleuth, and then behind us we have a bile pile. I absolutely hate it. 499 health. Okay, I'm guessing this is gonna end up being one of those, that damn dare. I mean, they should be dweller enemies, so they should be super weak to us, right? 108 damage, I'd say. Let's go ahead and Moonring on Bile Pile. Oh my god, it looks disgusting. What the actual fork? 366 damage. Ew. Definitely gonna need the power of the Solstice Warriors here to be able to do any considerable damage to these enemies. Getting a ton of XP though, and probably going to level up pretty early on here in today's episode. Looks like there's a fall there. I mean, this, like this heartbeat that's going on. This is a spooky area, friends. At least we get some shrooms. Looks like there's something over there. I don't think controlling the time of day matters too much in here. We have even more enemies here. Looks like these are Tis Ty Cyclops. Oh, Cyclops. That's a funny. That's that's funny. We're going to double boost because we have that skill that allows us to do that and we're going to hope for a big sunball in the middle. Deleted two, almost deleted this one. Flesh shields. Nice. I don't know what it did, but we defeated it and we get a level up. We're just being thrust into this episode here. And I am all for it. We're going to grab another mana point. Bring our total on Zale up to 16. Garl is going to do the same, bringing his total up to 17. 
17 MP on Garl. Sarai hopefully getting no MP, unfortunately, for her, but we're going to go ahead and increase her physical attack. And Valir. We unfortunately can't raise her MP, but she is getting two on this level regardless, so I think, I think we're going to go ahead and give her an extra two physical attack, bringing her total to 66. Really, she's the one that needs MP, though, so I get more access. Oh my gosh, okay. Looks like there's something underneath us, but I wanted to get more access to lunar shields. The more lunar shields I can get, the better. Oh, this is cool. Looks like there's a little area up here. Huh. Is this a time-based thing, I wonder? Very hard to see. Oh, oh, okay. Well, if we go back down... It's like maybe there's more crystals we can use over here. Kind of reminds me of, like, the Valley of Corrupted Gravity in a way. From Legend of Dragoon. Which, by the way, if you've never played that, you absolutely should, because it's very good. All right, there's a crystal. Oh, shoot! There was a crystal over there, but we weren't able to get it. I think we can just sunball these here. This should delete both of them. Yup. Then we got the Cyclops on this side. 350 damage. 350 health. All right, Moonerang it is. Let's go, Valir. 420, blaze it. And we can light up this crystal. Okay, that gave us a little bit more here. Almost wondering if this is... I feel like there is more we could do. Very cool area, though. Like, hard to see, but very cool. That's what we have solstice magic for, though, yeah? And we'll go ahead, and we actually can't. Unfortunately, we will not be able to. You know what? Ah, this is probably a bad idea, but... We'll Venom Flurry on Bile Pile. Just to break the lock on it. Get a Flesh Shield out from Cyclops here. Disgusting move. 462 damage from that solstice strike there. Any amount of boosting is really going to help you delete these enemies whenever dealing with any of these dwellers, and I really like that. They also give a ton of XP for how easy they actually are. I'm kind of surprised they give that much. I feel like that's the way we have to go, but it looked like maybe there was... I feel like we're missing stuff here. Maybe we backtrack just a little bit? Let's just double check. We'll do a little backtrack in here. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I, I need to like not talk because this, this area is so cool. Spooky. Yeah, I want to go back that way for sure. I feel like we're missing stuff here because there's a bunch of different ways that we can go. Yeah, that felt like the way we had to go. So we're going to continue this way first. There's a vine here we can use to get down. So hard to see anything, but hey. Hey, we're doing... Oh, yeah, because we get a new weapon for our dear portal... Oh, shoot! Our portal assassin, Sarai. We're going to go ahead and, uh, actually, we're just going to use, we're just going to, ah, we're going to sunball and then moon ring. Oh, geez. I didn't mean to let it go that fast. I didn't, I didn't realize I let go of the button. All right. Big moon rings coming out of us. There we go. Deleted. All right. Well, let's check out those daggers right away then for Sarai phantom daggers sharp blades emitting a faint eerie noise we just up what's weird is we just upgraded them 
uh, in the, like, basically, what, the dungeon right before this? And we already are able to upgrade them 65 attack now on Sarai, putting her in second place for our highest stat attacker. But it looks like this is also a dead end. We can't go any further. So uh, let's just go back to where we were. And the thing that I just want to wanted to bring back story-wise that I'm still like chewing over my head doing massive amount of recording today. So for me, that just happened. But Rashawn said that this dweller is a prank played by Aferol, the Fleshmancer, the other immortal alchemist. And I just, what does that mean though? You know, what do you mean prank? Looks like we have another little thing we can use here. All right, we have to find another way. This this whole area though is going to be pretty pretty tough to navigate through, I think. Hoping that we can find a camp or something soon. Oh, there's like, oh, that's cool. Little 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 tiny lifts we can use here. So hard to see. I'm sure it's even harder for you. Helps when we can turn on crystals, though. Tell you what. And there we go. That should open the way. Well, we got that. I just, I feel like this, if I'm going to miss anything in the game, it feels like it's going to be in this section. It is darker Rooney's. Hard to really see if there's any extra paths or anything. I mean, I almost missed the Phantom Daggers, and that would have stunk. I like using Sarai. Oh, there we go. You just have to, you just see that? You just have to ask for it. You'll get it. The Dweller of Torment. Y'all, we are getting there. We are trying to find him. We are... We're going to take down this Dweller. I mean, the Dweller of Woe was so strong and so terrifying. How are we going to be able to take down a Dweller? We can force the power of an Eclipse using Rashan, maybe? Like, that's interesting. We can force because we got the Solstice Amulet. It's all just looking good, man. It's all just looking good. Uh, we could break that lock, but I don't think it's worth it, actually. I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to switch to... We're going to use Garl real quick. We're going to hurl this Cyclops over this way. Boom, baby. And this way we can use a big old sunball from our dear, beautiful Zale. Uh, I'm actually wondering if the shield is going to stop sun damage or stop a spell. Oh, you can't hit both, huh? All right, well, let's hope for the best. I'm actually unsure what the shield even does. Ah, well, it protects against that, which should have known that's what it does. And we can finish this off. There we go. Turn on some lights, please. 19,000 XP to go for another level, but even then I feel like we're, it's, it's like, you. Okay. I didn't expect it to be all gross and stuff. So that's where we came in. Get disoriented just because of how dark it is. We can go down here real quick, and it looks like maybe... Just maybe there's something... Ah. No enemies. Maybe they'll, they'll pop up after I grab this rainbow conch, but either way, we'll grab that. Oh. Cool. No enemies. Nice. That's another rainbow conch, putting our total at 37? 38. All right. I don't remember, though, the next time we can turn it in for more rewards. But hopefully after this anyways. I hear you, bio piles. 
Nice. All right. We're going to do a big double boost here and then a sunball. And this should delete both of them no matter what. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So much damage to dwellers. I just like seeing the big numbers on dwell on. Uh, what is that? I like seeing the big damage on the 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 dweller type enemies minions whatever you want to call them that i don't know what that thing is but it looks real creepy can turn on these crystals looks like there's another thing here that we can't use just yet this is nasty looking no wonder why the decori decari told us don't go there dude but we'll continue through here Oh, I hear him. I hear him. Bah! Well, that's a lot of enemies. Uh, all right. How do we want to do this then? I guess we just want to do a double boost in Moonerang, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to kill literally all of these enemies. We got a Sleuth, a Bile Pile, and Cyclops. All of the enemies that can be found in this area. Well, these are usually the harder Moonerangs to do, but... Got them all, baby! Oh, no, except for the bio pile. I thought I got him. Whatever, dude. Oh, he's got 13 health left. Yeah, I got you all right. 2,000 XP. Also, if I didn't have the trophy yet for the Moonerang, I think I would have just got it. Right? That, that was 25. All right, that's the other one that we saw. So I'm assuming that's going to create a path for us to be able to use. No way to turn on lights in here. Just gotta hope for the best, man. Looks like we can go this way. Oh yeah, we have these yet again. See, I feel like there's there's story being told to us right now with the way some of this stuff is working. Looks like maybe go down this way first. Oop, wait. Well, okay, hang on. I can at least turn this on. But I saw a chest up here. And that's what we want to get. Come on, give me something good. Oop, I didn't mean to jump down. You didn't see that. No one saw that. Don't, shut up. We get a green leaf. Wait, don't we already have that? Isn't that just... Yeah, just 15. Yeah, I don't want that. Uh, sorry, but... I don't... I don't... That's a, that's a boring accessory. You know what I'm saying? 15 extra XP? Who cares? HP? Who cares? XP. Right, so we're going this way then. I like this area. I do. It's just... It's a little gruesome. Like, there is just... I mean, it's dope. Like, it's super cool. The 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 variety of locales that we've been to in the past few episodes is bonkers. What are... What are... What are... What are those... Are those... What are those... Uh, Zale? Yeah? Are you seeing a bunch of furry little butts? Yup. <laughs> Hello, ma'am! Wow, you all look so healthy! Is that a sword? Hey, you're like this other guy! He could shoot tiny little suns! He said he'd save our mom, and then he left instead. So rude. Don't be rude, son boy. What is going on here? <laughs> uh, can we keep one? What happened to your mom? She's down below. We love her so much. She says we can't go and see her because of a monster. So we just stare at her from up here. She's so pretty. We used to run around the island. I miss the clouds. Do clouds still exist? Hey, it sounds like they're talking about the gorilla matriarch. 
But Teak said all divine spirits had been destroyed by the Fleshmancer long ago. The... The what? The Headmaster mentioned this too, though he said they were either destroyed or harvested. The Gorilla Matriarch, could that also then be... Like, is the Great Eagle considered one of those? He said they were either destroyed or harvested. Ugh. So the cubs are... Food for the Dweller. How did our order not stop this? We just put a seal on the mountain and pretend like nothing happened? Hey, it's rude to just talk between yourselves. Don't do this! We'll help your mom and get you all back outside. Really? That would be awesome! We could run around the island again. Or maybe they'll never return like our siblings. I think they were eaten by the monster. I think they found a nicer room and don't want to share. Not sharing is rude! We will return, you have our word. Let's end this madness. Yeah, are we, are we losing our minds? Are these real? She says we can't go and see her because of the monster. What is, what, what? I, what? Dear viewer, what? Well, we definitely want to rest because I um, have a feeling we're about to come face to face with the dweller. That is so freaky. Uh, what does this do? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, is this, uh, this is the beginning of the dungeon. Oh, neat. Okay, so we have a shortcut. That is one thing that I love about this game is they built in the shortcuts for you. Almost every single dungeon or area has a shortcut for you. So I feel like, oh, I thought maybe there was something down here. This is so weird, but Okay, I think we're we're gonna. We're, that was ominous. Here we go. Dweller of torment versus solstice warriors, and a warrior cook, and a portal assassin. Okay. Are we going? Oh, whoa! Is that oh, <gasps> gorilla matriarch? You really are alive. You should not have come. The evil of this place is too vile to confront, even for solstice warriors. What happened to you? I was subjected to the Fleshmancer's final affront to this world. Before leaving, he placed a seed of evil in the depths of this mountain and bound me here, so that my cubs would remain in close proximity. This guy, I swear. I am cursed to watch helplessly as they walk before me on the way to be devoured by the growing Dweller of Torment. And with their innocent minds so easily controlled, my pleas always go unheard. What a terrible fate. How did we not know about this? Surely those who came before would have reported on the presence of a divine spirit, let alone a Dweller. It's all connected to the curse of this place. It was devised to be the perfect lair. Memories formed within the mountain belong to it forever. Solstice warriors came, but whenever they left to get reinforcements, they would remember nothing other than a crippling sense of dread. All they could do was seal the mountain and never return. I'm so sorry. There isn't much that could have been done, even if they did prepare a cleansing. They're so deep within the lair. The light from the Eclipse would never touch the Dweller to make it vulnerable. There has to be a way. Your duty to the world at large is paramount. Please, seal the mountain again and go. Apps of forking lootly not. Zale and I will fight. No sitting around this time, I'm fighting too. Okay, so the Tethered Mind Potion keeps our memories safe, but that's useless for the fight. And the Solstice Amulet should resonate with the Dweller. But the light from the Eclipse will never get in here. I have a plan. Just go and trigger the Eclipse. Sarai has left. Oh no! Okay, no turning back now. Well? Do we... I mean, I... I want to save them. Hang in there, Matriarch. We have to. We have to save... Like, I feel so bad for, like that, what a horrible, what a horrible, let's go. 
Oh, this is... I don't want to be under here, though. I'll tell you that. All right. And... Good thing we can breathe underwater now. Hey, there's a cub. Hey there, little guy. I want to see my mom. She's just over there. Come, we'll take you to her. I feel she's this way. I think you lie. Please come with us. We talked to her. She's very worried. Why do you lie? Uh, I want to see my mom. Leave me alone. Wait. No, this. Oh, do not do it, gorilla. Why don't you try us for lunch instead, you creep? What the? The amulet reacted. I can feel the eclipse. Sarai, whatever you're planning, please make it quick. Heads up! Uh, Dweller of torment, right arm, left arm. I guess we'll attack an arm. All right, we do no damage in, oh, uh, we don't do any damage then until the, okay, we're gonna lunar shield here then. We don't do any damage until Sarai is able to do whatever she's doing. We'll get a lunar shield up, ready to go. Nice. Ping. Yeah, even hitting it, it's gonna do nothing. Um, we don't have enough combo here to do anything. We can at least break a little bit of it. Belly drop. Oof. Okay, that actually doesn't do that much damage, though, so I'm not super concerned. All right, what are we doing? Just waiting, then? It's useless. We need more light. Make way! So right. Oh. Sorry I'm late. Right on, Sarai! Let's take this thing down. Uh, Sarai? Oh, yep, we get her back. You're so cool, Sarai! That was amazing. All right, we do have Solstice Strike that we can use, but I think what we want to do here is we want to focus on the arm. Yeah, we want to focus on the arms. I know we could break that, but... If he just does that belly drop, then it's not that big of a deal, right? So what we're going to do here is we're just going to big boost, sunball. If we sunball in the middle, I wonder, though, if this is like the plant brain where we just... Oh, no, we can do some damage to it. All right, but I think we want to focus on taking out the arms here is what it feels like to me based on the way this thing is constructed. That did not do that much damage. Now we'll swap to Sarai who can get a disorient here. We're going to use uh, maybe a dash strike isn't a terrible idea. We're building up that combo meter as well as we go. There we- yes! The ultimate meter, I mean. And then we're going to... Venom Flurry? It'll at least break the lock on the Dweller of Torment. The worst part of this is that this... disgusting creature... actually... Yeah, I want to wait for Moonship, man is like taking on the form of her cubs that he that he's eating and that is just that's rude that's real rude let's get a boost here
use Sarai just to build up that. All right, that does very little damage. I want to see if we can get just some big combos here. Five hundred and forty. How much health do these arms have? Maybe we're not. Woo! Maybe we're not supposed to take them out. All right, we have max amount of combo points here. We're gonna use another disorient. All right, we're gonna use. I actually, I should have used. It's okay. Oh, we got one of the arms down. Oh, and it destroyed the lock too. Oh, interesting. I wonder if he can revive his arms, though. Interesting. How many do we have? Two boost. And go for a big sunball with Zale. Yes! Okay, so he's down for a certain amount of time. We can use the ultimate here. Finally, and see what it does. Vespertine cannons. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was still cool. All right. That's it, though. We're going to use... Actually, not yet. Not yet. Um, we're going to attack. We're going to... Sunball. Good. We're going to attack yet again with Sarai just to build up the boost. And then we're going to use both of these boost and we're going because I think that's how that works and we're going to use moon shiv for the first time ever yeah a thousand damage whoa you're telling me that this guy has that much damn dweller we're going to lunar shield here Sonic Pain. Okay. It hits a few times. Good to know. We can dash strike here. Or we attack for more boost. I think we dash strike. We could use her ultimate yet again. It is very cool looking, but I think instead we're going to use a mushroom soup here. We'll use the ultimate, but I don't think it's going to do much against the arms here. I mean, I guess it does 180 damage. Might as well just use it, right? All right. Well, we have to use a combo here, actually. We're going to go... We're going to use... Uh, that'll break the lock. And we'll be able to grab an extra boost here. This thing looks so cool, though. Sunball. I do want to be able to do splash damage on them, at least a little bit. Four hundred and four damage just isn't enough, is it? Uh, all right, so Moonring it is. 159. That's just not enough. And then we'll disorient. Woo! Now we could use X Strike. Which would probably be enough. But the problem is, is if we do that, then we don't have... We can't do one of those big attacks that we were able to do before. 
think we just hit with a sunball here. Alright, one of his arms broke. Ah, but he's supposed to... I thought... Didn't that break the lock last time? It did not on this one. Alright, we're gonna Lunar Shield. So we're gonna have to... I am confused. Is that all the lock did? All right, let's get some MP back. Some locks back. Oh, there we go. I was worried that he was going to resurrect his stuff, but I don't think so. Big boost. Use moon shiv. That is so cool. Messed up on the timing, but... Let's go ahead and get an extra boost here. We've got two turns. And then we'll give him both of those and hope a big sunball to this big old dweller's face is gonna be enough. 750? Like, almost wondering if the combo is not even worth. And we did it! With the ultimate, the Dweller of Torment is defeated. We did it! Good thinking, Sarai. Now to destroy the core. Together. Ready to go free the matriarch? You bet. Yes, I am. You owe us nothing, matriarch. Oh, but is the least I can do. Fixing the Watcher will only take a moment, and its prism is how you will find what you are looking for. Mom, can we go run around the island now? Certainly, my dear. In fact, we must run to the Watcher now. Mom, can we go swimming now? First, we must go to the Watcher, then we can go to the water. Watcher water! Hey, how fast can you say Watcher water? Watcher water! Watcher water! <laughs> this is so forking cute, and I'm so glad that we could save them. Huh. So the Watcher's Prism is the key. Let's see here. Use R2 and L2 on the world map to unveil the... Right. So it's that passage. Yeah, there we go. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Wake up! <laughs> Shine it directly on, his, on himself. That was amazing. That fight was so good! I was curious if maybe where we defeated the Dweller... If maybe there's things now, you know what I mean? Like items you can find once you defeat one. Since both times we defeated a dweller, it's placed us d directly outside of the area. Back at camp. Now that the prism is back on the Watcher statue, we should be able to drive a light beam through it and find the cache Rashawn was talking about. Glad that dweller is behind us now and that we saved the matriarch. The way Sarai brought the light in Torment Peak, it was unbelievable. She created a portal to it. That was so cool. Like, ridiculously cool. All right, now we can finally check out the Mossy Cache. Which is an area that we haven't been able to access before. What is 
What is... Ooh, look at that. Rainbow conch. That is 39? 39. Beautiful. And then it looks like we can also maybe... Uh, oh, it's one of these. Okay, we have to make it look like something. Um, well, we need that that way. Oh, this is super easy. This is actually easier than I thought it was going to be. Oops. There it is. The matriarch. Or no. Oh, it's not the... It's, uh... It's Rashawn? Oh. It's the Fleshmancer's boot on Rashawn's head. Pushing him into... I see. Huh. Sense of humor, huh? And we got the vial of time. This is it. Let's take it to Rashan. Yeah! God, this game's so cool. All right, to Rashan we go. Where did the matriarch and them go now, though? I hope we see them again. Be cool if we just if they're if you just like see them on the world map occasionally. They said they were gonna go swimming. Maybe they did. All right, so we have to go to the lake and then use the portal in the lake to go back to the uh, the alchemist, Rashawn, right? Let's do it. Teleport to the archives? I, I can't believe that we get to go there. I thought that was just a narrative device. Should have known. Rashawn, we have your vial. It appears you do, but we should make sure it is not an imitation. Garl, would you kindly throw it at the wall? Uh, I... With all your strength. Won't it break? I hope so. Well, okay. Whoa! Vial of time? Oh, how I've missed you! Thank you for recovering my most prized possession. You've shown much bravery. You better hold up your end of the bargain now. No more errands. Oh, make no mistake. I'm coming with you. Uh... Wait. But my code is strict, so there are rules. First, I may assist in battle, but it is not my place to win for you. As such, I will match your power, but never exceed it. Wait, you're really going to- Next! No one other than the four of you can be aware of my true identity. You are to refer to me exclusively as Rashan, and most importantly, never as the Immortal Alchemist. You got it! Might want to be extra careful around Teeks, though. Lastly, and most importantly, I am, under no circumstances, allowed to fight a Dweller. If a confrontation occurs with the Dweller of Strife, that fight will be yours and yours alone. Understood. Shall we go, then? Uh, Rashan. Yes? You can't come like this. Your robes are all tattered. Oh? Huh. If you don't want people to know you're immortal, maybe clothes that have been decaying for millennia aren't the safest bet. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh my gosh. Better. Totally. Then lead the way. Mesa Island is to the northeast, the one with the giant stone head. Rashan, the immortal alchemist, joins the... I... Are you... And I... Are you are you serious? 
It is nice to meet you, Teeks. I'm also a traveler of sorts. Rashan, huh? So you make potions? You could say that. Now, wait a minute. There's more to you. Uh. <gasps> I see. Don't worry, I won't tell. Would you mind, though? Uh, if you promise not to tell of my true identity, you can have my story, yes. I promise! Just stand still for one second here and... Thanks! Hey, we were just wondering what to do with the glass dome. You can use it as a greenhouse. Come, I'll show you. Ocean guy is welcome to stay, of course. Mesa Island, eh? That's where we're headed. Aye, that can be roughly to the north of here. Big stone head. Can't miss it. Just grab the wheel whenever you're ready. Y'all, I... The, the last couple of episodes, I just, like, cannot believe things are happening. Like, like I... Like I... And I... See, I knew it! So I think we have a full party now, my friends. That is incredible. We now have Rashan, who has a withered cork that is in need of replacing. A enchanted to appear to be in mint condition, a tattered cape, which I'm guessing uh, can actually be equipped on. So they share capes now. Look at his magic defense. His magic defense is huge, actually, like like huge. We're going to go ahead. His attack is 55. His magic attack is 59. We're going to go ahead and give him the enchanted scarf and the green leaf. And it doesn't matter, but the abacus for now. And what does he have for skills? Abeyance. Deals arcane damage while pulling enemies together. Oh. Removes a random lock on the target. Plus one lock if timed. Oh. He's also, he also has 18 mana. Soothing Mist heals the party for 12 MP. Really? And his ultimate, Rashan's ultimate attack. It does venom damage. We don't have any other, he doesn't have a combo or anything yet. Her ultimate does blunt and slashing damage. Nobody else has one yet. Rashan. He seems like he's going to be really cool in battle. I'm curious how much he actually heals for then. Well, they want us to go to to Mesa Island, but I think we should, can do some... I think we could do some quick world traveling stuff. So let's get on the ship and yeah, we're going to do some traveling here. Rashawn has a place on the ship too, but let's go to... Uh, let's check out Still Pond Island first. It's right here. We can change the time of day and, and everything now on the world map, which means there's probably some puzzles that we can now access. But we haven't been over here yet. We've been chilling. We've been waiting to go over here. So let's check it out. Actually, before we even do that, let's check out camp. So Rashan's an immortal, huh? Oh, right. Shh. The way Sarai brought the light in. Yeah, you said that. Glad that dweller's behind us now. Okay, so Valir doesn't say anything new. Rashan? Mesa Island is to the northeast, the one with the giant stone head. Okay, Sarai. I don't trust the alchemist yet. Okay. I... I think I do. And we now have the story of the two alchemists, which is probably the prologue that was released before the game came out. Let's see. Countless millennia ago, two powerful alchemists named Rashan an Alpharol set out to create the elixir of life and succeeded. As all things in alchemy come at a price, the gift of immortality caused their bodies to decay, leading them to conceal their hideousness under colorful robes. Reveling at first, 
In the bright side of their immortal coil, they spent centuries nurturing the world and creating wonders to inspire its mortals. Over time, however, Ephraim grew increasingly jealous of the ephemerality he would never taste again. Thus began his wicked journey into the forbidden schools of alchemy, a journey which would see every last bit of good in his heart dissipate as he experimented with soul, bone, flesh, and blood alike. As fate would have it, Ephraim fully embraced evil and emerged as the Fleshmancer, a vengeful immortal plaguing the world with his monstrous creations. Rashan tried intervening as best he could, but all that ensued was unspeakable chaos and collateral damage as the two former friends fought with godlike powers. After much struggle, Rashan discovered the flesh minions' only weaknesses to be solar and lunar magic, a power bestowed upon these born during a solstice. He began training these children to become solstice warriors, singularly tasked with culling the numbers of the Fleshmancer's creations. But Ephraim's knowledge was only growing. Eventually, he became capable of creating oddities of unlimited potential known as Dwellers. They would be impervious to all forms of magic, except during a total eclipse, when Solstice Warriors would have a very short window to attempt taking them down. Dwellers, it turned out, were creatures in development feeding on local life. Left to their own devices for too long, they would evolve into World Eaters, spelling doom for all. Armed with knowledge and power, Solstice Warriors would patrol the world, tracking dwellers to determine which should be taken down during the next eclipse. If they remained vigilant, there would never be a World Eater. But Rashan knew such a stalemate would only cause Ephraim to devise something even worse. In a desperate attempt to get ahead, Rashan boldly performed transmutation alchemy on the very space-time continuum itself. After successfully splitting reality into countless timelines and parallel worlds, he shelved his alchemy vial and took up the mantle of Archivist. On an endless journey across all realities, he would catalog every possible outcome in search of a resolution to the throes of the Fleshmancer. Meanwhile, Aphorol rejoiced at the infinite number of opportunities for destruction that had just opened up to him. To find some measure of peace amidst their immortal conflict, the two alchemists made a pact to let the fate of each timeline play out on its own. And so the game of cat and mouse began, played by dwellers and solstice warriors on one level, and by Rashan and Ephraim on another. Across a myriad of timelines and other numerous centuries, some worlds would never be visited by Ephraim, while others would be cursed by his mark. Once marked, it was only a matter of time until a world met its finality, often following centuries of struggle. Each would either be destroyed by a world eater, are permanently saved by the ascension of a pair of solstice warriors into guardian gods. As to when Rashan's plans on recomposing the timelines, or whether he even knows how, remains to be seen. The end. Ah, so... So we're here to solve... To solve it all. That's why maybe he's putting his weight behind this timeline? I am into it. And I guess we'll check this out here on Still Pond Island. Save point. A little thing of water. No fish, though. Looks like there's something there. Get a rainbow conch. What's that in the water, though? Looks like that's all we can do. I mean, we can cast, but there's nothing here, so. Well, that's okay. We still got a rainbow conch, so I'll take that. I really want to see, see Rashawn in battle, friends. He does arcane damage. Arcane damage is totally new. We haven't seen that before. We also haven't seen anything require that to break its lock. So back on the Vespertine. We have another island up here that we can check out. This one is Basalt. Let's turn on the lights here. Giant volcano. That's probably... Oh, can we actually go in here? It's a camp right away. Uh, but it's sealed. All right, well, we can grab shrooms at least. Maybe we need, like, an earthquake or something. 
we can, of course, check out the Sulfuric Basin, which is another fishing hole. I'm sure has some stuff on it. Let's see, how many new fish? Two new fish. And we got a rock shrimp. Rock shrimp is new. Let's see what the other one is. And we got a lava koi. Oh, that was really cool. Don't recommend doing that right now, but dang, rock shrimp really easy. Lava koi, not so much, but I think that's everything that we can get here. So we have one more place that I would like to go to, and that's mirth. Because we've done a lot for Mirth now. Something that we haven't been able to show off yet, though, is the Ping Parrot. So if we use that and have that relic on, we can see that... Wah! Conch left, conch left in Mirth. Interestingly enough, Solstice Shrine Islands, it says that we have a treasure left. Wraith Island, it says there's something in Flooded Graveyard. Still Pond, it says we need to progress further first. Uh, there's a treasure left in Moon Cradle, which we know about. There's a conch left in the Moorlands, which I'm guessing is behind that crystal that we need to break on Sleeper Island. Interestingly, there's also a conch, uh, there's a conch left in Moorlands. And if you treasure left in the port town of Briss. So it will actually say numerous things. So for this little island here, we need to progress further, whatever that means. Need to progress further. All right. Well, why don't we check out Mirth? But what a cool relic. Really like that. Oh, yep. The elder's house is now built. We should have a few things. We now have plans, so we can go ahead. Let's go ahead and talk to Bob the Builder. We have the inn plans. Let's get to work. Now, we don't have an innkeeper yet. It's one of the few NPCs we have not been able to find, but I'm sure we will. Had you already found a professional to run the place? No, uh, but we do have the fishing hut and we do have a professional for that. He's standing right next to you, in fact. You can now fish at the new house in Mirth. This special lake will contain random selections from the species you've already caught. What is the reason for that, though, then? Yep, we found a professional. And finally, we have, the only one we have left, is the shop. Shop plans. And a shop has been unlocked in Mirth. I'm very curious to see if they end up having stuff that we haven't gotten yet. We do have the shopkeeper. Those were the people, the Dokari, Dokari that we found. So let's check out the fishing hut first. Oh, nice. We can just like steal his stuff, huh? Welcome to Mirth's one and only fishing house. I want to thank you again for letting me use this place. It's a fisherman's dream come true. I have three fishing rod upgrades for you, but you'll need to earn them. It's pretty simple. I'll be tracking how many different species you've caught, and at certain milestones, you get an upgrade. Sound good? Good. There aren't any fish unique to the lake connected to this house, but I'll be adding to it any species you have already caught. Let's see if we can complete the roster, shall we? Uh, let's see rewards list. I love how it doesn't tell us, like, which ones we get. Sturdy, reliable, alacritous, filmsy, flimsy. Why would I want something that's flimsy? Hey, you caught 14 different species. That means I got something for you. We get the stereofilament line, the mithril rod, and the bearing reel. Okay. Those are relics, it looked like. So... Ah, a sturdier fishing rod that carries so much power it intimidates the catch, causing its stamina to deplete faster. Easier to spin and never jams, increasing reeling speed. Made of sturdy material to offer more leeway when reeling in a stubborn catch. Can take more damage before breaking. So they automatically turn those on. They're, I guess they're, they're kind of like reels. I don't, I don't know if I would say they are, but they're nothing like these, right? Or relics, I mean. Cool. We'll, we'll equip those. And we'll also take all of those. Thank you very much. So he also has this pond here. We can also go 
down into the water? I don't think we need to do that. Yeah, there's fishies now. Oh, and a rainbow conch. Nice. So I think we're at 40 now. Cool, so just by doing the fishing hut, not only do we now get any access to this, which, I mean, you don't need it. You can fish if you want, but all you get is the fillets and stuff, which I guess is fine for cooking and all that jazz, but we don't really need it. Oh, that was still sparkly. Why? Is there something there? No. But getting the rainbow conch, though, now that's cool. All right, let's check the inn. Not the inn, sorry, the item shop. This place is perfect, even better than I imagined. And we can buy a bunch of items. We can also, uh, a crostade, maple syrup, underrated yet overpriced. Ain't that the truth? Also music sheet number three. We do need that. I can already hear the clients coming in. All right. Oh, cool. We can actually buy, uh, we don't need any of this. All right, never mind. Oh, wait, wait. Sail ah, increases sailing speed. We do need that eventually. And we can sell some things to help us get there. Let's go ahead and buy the recipe and the music sheet first. There we go. And we can buy the salient sails relic, which increases our sailing speed. Which, I mean, I don't I don't see I don't see a reason not to have that on. It actually turned it on right away. Proudly made using Briss secret techniques and allegedly enchanted with a magic charm. Increases sailing speed by 20%. Just allows us to get around the world map faster. Nothing wrong with that. While well, sailing, anyways. Uh, looks like we can't actually go anywhere. I was kind of hoping that all of the shops that we opened would give us something. But I guess that's how we get access to that relic, though. So that's worth. I don't see anything up on top of the item shop either. If we check out the sign in front, it just says innkeeper wanted. So hopefully we can find out something along those, like what to do with that. But the elder does have a house now. Elder Moraine's house is all done. Have to say, pretty happy with the result. Yeah, all right, well, let's check it out. This is a really nice house. Thank you. I wasn't expecting so much. He doesn't say anything about... That's interesting. Nothing about the fact that Rashawn is with us. Moraine's office key. Okay, well, that means that we are... Do you say anything about that? Nope. Okay. Thank you. We're going to take that. And that's... Uh, it looks like that's everything we can do in Mirth for now. So we're going to take that. We're going to head all the way back to... Moon Cradle over on Evermist Isle Island. Ever Ever Evermist Ever Island. And in Zenith Academy, all the way back in Moon Crater Cradle, uh, we can use this key. Giving us access to his office. For the first time ever, this place is a disaster, Head Headmaster Moraine. What were you doing? Ooh, there's an item in here, and then whatever this is. What is that? And what's in here? Moonstone Bracer. Okay. It's gotta be for her, then. Magic attack plus 10. Lunar shield costs two less MP. Are you kidding me? That is... That is so strong for her. Wow. Um, we're just going to give her that instead of... Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, we'll give him Dexter's Bangle too. We'll see how his timing is, but... Wow. Magic attack plus 10. Lunar shields cost negative... Or uh, cost less... Uh, two less MP. Jeez Louise. That is going to be amazing. I think we even have our full party. That's pretty wild. And I was curious and wanted to know, so look this up. The first part is moon. Second part is sun. 
and it is yet another Kickstarter thing, which is pretty cool, actually. It's actually apparently from a an event that happened on the Discord, uh, a snowball fight be that happened between the Sun and Moon Solstice Warriors, and the winners would get their names, but it, apparently they tied, and before the final match, they agreed to share victory instead of fight it out. So they got all their names on there, and I think that's really cool. Let's check the parrot and see if we're done done. I mean, we probably just got one of the best accessories in the game for Valir. Let's be real. Well, apparently we have a treasure left here in Sun Glow Lake. Let's see what it is. Apparently at the top of Sun Glow Lake, there was a, a picnic thing and maybe I just... Apparently I missed it. It had five dairy in it. But I guess because I... I didn't know that you could do that. I didn't know you could swim in the water yet, baby. Weird thing to miss, Corey. Weird thing to miss. We have the all clear for Watcher Island as well. What's odd about that, though, is that... I guess that's what the star means. If it's clear, you get a star at the top. Wraith Island, there's still treasure left in the flooded graveyard. We're gonna... We're going to wait a bit before getting going back to Wraith Island, just because I don't think we have anything. I don't think any of the things we've gotten would allow us to do anything extra in Wraith Island at the moment. So we're going to wait a little bit. I'm so curious what this is, though. Instead, we're going to start heading to where we need to go, which is Mesa Island. Right here, you can tell because of the big head. We were told it would have a big head there, and it does. This is where we dock. It looks like there's only one place to go, Mesa Hike. Which, my dear viewer, beautiful friendos, we will do in the next episode of The Sea of Stars. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave likes, comments, shares, all that stuff. It really, 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 it really helps, and we need that help. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Uh, I can't believe that, I can't believe this dude's on our team now, and I don't even know, like, what is, I haven't even been able to see him fight yet. So, you know, you're going to want to see that in the next episode. Okay, 